Countdown to Halloween 2023, featuring eerie and uncanny tales of haunts, ghosts, and suspense. October is finally here. Join us all month for special Halloween presentations on StoryLink Radio's YouTube channel as we count down to Halloween 2023. Keep a close eye on YouTube alerts or you'll miss one. Celebrate October with us right here. And now, tonight's presentation from Story Link Radio. <laughs> Wish Fulfillment Greg was the only fifth grader who didn't like his teacher, Mrs. Reed. Yeah, but then Greg didn't seem to really like anyone. He thought her classes were too boring, and he didn't hesitate to mention that to anyone who would listen. Even when the teacher arranged special events, such as a visit by a real astronaut during a class on the solar system, yeah, Greg criticized that idea. And now that the mummy and certain belongings of the great Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun were on tour, the class was scheduled to go on a field trip to the local natural history museum. All the students were excited about the trip. Well... Almost all the students. Greg started complaining as soon as the class began to board the bus. It would take them into town. This is so dumb, he mumbled to Maria, the girl unfortunate enough to sit next to him. Who wants to see an old dead guy? Maria scowled. I do for one, Greg. King Tut was one of the most famous people who ever lived. When he was our age, he ruled a whole country. I think this is exciting. Greg waved his hand. That's not such a big deal. When I grow up, I'm going to be famous, too. Oh, yeah? Benny Taylor twisted in his seat to look back at Greg. What are you going to do to become famous? Talk everyone to death, Greg? <laughs> I've got a plan, Greg lied. I haven't absolutely decided yet, but there are lots of things I could do. Maybe I'll be a race car driver. <laughs> he looked at his companions to see if they were impressed. No one was. Yeah, but... Not just any old race car driver, Greg continued. One of those daredevils like that guy that jumped over the Grand Canyon. Nobody jumped over the Grand Canyon, Benny snorted. Greg crossed his arms and smiled smugly. Then I'll be the first one. You'll see. Someday everyone will know who I am. Benny and Maria both laughed as the rumbling of the bus engine grew louder and the vehicle carefully turned out of the parking lot onto the main road. Now, Greg might not be very enthusiastic about visiting the museum, but he was pleased to miss a day of school. And who wouldn't be? He really didn't see the point of learning history and geography. Those kids that work so hard and always turn in their homework and stuff are dumb. There's an easier way, Greg thought to himself. The drive to the city took less than an hour. During that time, Mrs. Reed explained to the children the museum was fairly large, so it was important that they all stick together. She informed them of the rules, and they would be expected to follow, such as being as quiet as possible and not touching any of the objects. Finally, she passed out a map of the museum to each student. The room that held the Egyptian exhibit was marked with a large X. Soon the yellow school bus pulled slowly into the parking lot in front of the city museum. Talking and laughing, the children piled out of the bus and gathered at the entrance to the building. Near the door, a beautiful fountain spouted a glistening stream of water into the air. The morning sun created a breathtaking rainbow that quivered with a delicate spray. Yeah, but Greg barely noticed that. He simply whined about how hot it was standing in the sun. Are they ever going to let us go inside? Greg griped. Once inside the huge air-conditioned lobby, he continued to protest. Oh, this is going to take forever. When are we supposed to stop for lunch? This is so boring. Finally, Maria had had enough. Look, Greg, she said angrily, if you're going to do nothing but complain, you're going to ruin it for everyone else. Why don't you just keep your comments to yourself? She walked off to join the rest of the group. Greg watched her go. He hated it when someone told him to be quiet. Yeah, go ahead, jerk. I didn't want to come anyway. The other students turned a corner, and Greg slowed down enough to find himself alone. He had decided to explore on his own when Mrs. Reed peeked back around the corner. Gregory, please stay with us. I don't want to have to worry about you. Grudgingly, Greg trailed along as the group passed a display of early American Indian art. As he reached out to feel a large woven basket, a nearby guard spoke up. Please don't touch this, son. It's very old. So what? Greg responded and looked defiantly into the man's eyes. The guard was obviously irritated with Greg's lack of respect. Why don't you just stay with your teacher, kid? You might get into trouble roaming around here on your own. And don't touch anything. 
Greg was about to say something in return, but thought better of it. He sauntered away, unsure which direction his group had gone. He turned back to ask the guard, but found himself completely alone now. The marble hall was curiously quiet. Dark-toned paintings and gilded frames lined the walls. From every direction, painted eyes stared at him. He thought he saw a tiny monkey scurry by, but couldn't be sure. Greg could feel the gaze of the eyes, though, and it made him uneasy. He headed toward the far end of the hall. Moments later, he found himself before a grand archway marked the tools of ancient magic. Carefully, he pulled a crumpled map of the museum from his pocket to see how far he was from the Egyptian room. Oddly, the tools of ancient magic did not appear on the map. Still, it sounded a lot more interesting than hanging around, um, gaping at a moldy old dummy. Uh, mummy, he meant. So Greg stepped through the arch and found himself in a spacious room. The light was mainly provided by small spotlights over the displays. Against each wall was a tall glass case presenting unusual objects made of wood, rock, or bone, and decorated with beads, feathers, and shells. One sign identified a large carved bone as an object for casting out evil spirits that cause mental illness. A small crystal was labeled as a charm that would protect the wearer from poison. But Greg was drawn to a lone exhibit spotlighted in the center of the room. It was a huge, rough rock at least ten feet tall. Some long-forgotten person had carved it to look like a human face with long earlobes and jutting jaw. The rock was surrounded by velvet ropes. A sign stood nearby requesting that visitors not touch the display. For a moment, Greg stood in front of the sign. When he smiled and reached out to run his fingertips over the stone, it was surprisingly warm and soft, almost like human flesh. He shelled his fingers along the side of the wide, silent mouth. Ow! he cried. As he snatched his hand back from the rock, something sharp had pricked Greg's finger, and a tiny drop of blood glistened at the corner of the statue's lips. Looking around to be sure that he was alone, Greg reached out to rub the drop away, but he only caused it to smear. Then he felt the stone grow warmer. The air around him seemed to hum. Greg's heart raced. He quickly whirled and dashed for the door, but it was gone. Turning around completely around, he saw there was no exit, just four smooth, solid walls. He threw himself against the place where the door had been, but he didn't budge. Hey! Hey! What's going on here? A terrified boy pounded the wall with a closed fist. What do you want? A deep voice echoed behind him. Greg froze. Fearfully, he turned to see the shadowy figure standing near the statue. I asked, what do you want? The voice repeated, why did you call me? I didn't call you. A dark blood stain glittered on the stone. You did. Oh, I'm sorry, Greg was trembling. I didn't mean to. I was just... I just wanted to get out. All right, let's get it over with, the figure interrupted. It's bad enough that I must use my powers for the benefit of worthless humans. I don't need to listen to your meaningless babble as well. As frightened as he was, Greg bristled at the insult. Who's worthless? Who do you think you are? I know who precisely who I am, the being answered. I am a genie of the most ancient realm. Greg's amazement and curiosity overpowered his fear. A genie? You mean like from a bottle? The genie seemed very annoyed. <sighs> yeah, something like that. What do you want, boy? Oh, so you have to grant wishes, don't you? Greg's terror had turned to pleasure. This was it. He had always known something like this was going to happen to him. The genie sneered. <laughs> Seems you've done a little reading, boy. I'm overwhelmed by this display of intelligence. Greg was losing his temper. I wish you'd stop being so mean and just give me an answer. The light dimmed. For a second, the surroundings grew hazy and then became crystal clear. Yes, the genie said smugly. I must grant you three wishes. <laughs> One down, two to go. But be careful. Fortune sees to it that no one gets any more than they deserve. You tricked me out of one wish, Greg frowned. But I'm too smart for you. I know exactly what I want, and, I, and, and, and now you have to grant my wishes. He stood proudly with his hands on his hips. I want to be... I want to be the richest boy who ever lived. And I want to be famous. One of the most famous people in all the world. Once again, the room dimmed. 
details swirled into an indistinct pool of color and shadow. When things became clear again, Greg was lying on his back. All of his classmates were gathered around him in awe. Maria leaned in close. He heard her whisper. Wow. Benny stared steadily right into Greg's eyes. Cool. Greg felt triumphant. He tried to open his mouth and shout, I told you so, but nothing happened. Struggling to sit up, he realized his body wouldn't respond. The only thing he could feel at all was a deep, penetrating cold. The cold of the grave. His nostrils were filled with the smell of countless centuries of decay now. Mrs. Reed leaned over Greg. She was smiling. Yes, children. The boy king was the richest of the pharaohs. During his short life, he was probably one of the most important people on earth. You might say he was the richest, most famous boy who ever lived. Careful what you wish for. Hmm? <laughs> You've just heard tonight's story from Storylink Radio's Countdown to Halloween 2023. Remember to come back for our next tale. Many more stories of all genres available to listen to and read along with now on our website at www.storylinkradio.com. Visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash storylinkradio. And visit our podcast for easy mobile listening anywhere, anytime. Just search for Storylink Radio on your favorite podcast provider. Oh, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click that alert bell for Storylink Radio.